This video covers using PROC contents and PROC print to view your data and variables. Though there are a lot of options available with both of these procedures, I'm only going to cover a few of those that I find I use most often. You can see that I already ran my lib name, data, and set syntax so that I can open my examples to data set into the working folder in SAS. Let's take a look at PROC contents first. PROC contents allows you to view the variables in your data set along with some additional information. The syntax is very simple. It's just PROC contents, data equals, and then the name of your data set, which is example two, ended with a semicolon. You don't actually have to add this data equals option to the syntax, but if you ever have multiple data sets open in SAS at the same time, PROC contents will run on whichever data set you used most recently. So I find it a good habit to get into using this option so I know I'm running my procedure only on the data set I'm interested in. Let's go ahead and run this syntax. You'll see in the results viewer, I get a lot of information about my data set. Down at the bottom, I get an alphabetical list of the variables and attributes. So in addition to just the variable name, I get the type, format, which I'll cover in another video, and label, which I'll also cover in another video. You may notice that this variable list doesn't look like it's in alphabetical order. That's because SAS is sensitive to the case of the variable. My ID variable is in all caps, so it actually comes first before arrival, which is in lowercase. There are two options you may find useful for co proc contents. One is position and the other is short. Position allows you to print the variable table at the bottom, but in the order in which the variables appear in your data set. This can be very useful if you have a lot of variables and you just want to see them in the order in which you've put them. The other option is short, and what this does is it just prints the variable names, nothing else. Let's look at both of those really quickly. You'll see my position option gives me the same information, but at the bottom I get the variables in creation order. The short option only gives me this little bit of output down here, which is just the list of variables, no other information. Let's move on to proc print basics. Proc print allows you to see your data, every observation, with all the information for all variables. The syntax is again very simple. It's just proc print, data equals, and then the name of your data set, followed by a semicolon. Let's take a look at that. You can see I have all 20 of my observations printed out each variable with each value for the variable per person. You'll notice I have this column added to the front of my data set, OBS, and it's numbered 1 through 20. This is the observation in the order in which it appears in my data set. A couple options that I find particularly useful for the PROC print are OBS equals 5 and NOOBS. The first option allows me just to print the number of observations that I want to see. So if I add parentheses, OBS equals 5, close parentheses, add a semicolon, it will only print the first five observations in my data set. This is very handy if you have a very large data set and you just want to check to make sure that, say, the variable that you added has been actually added to your data set or if you want to make sure your import process worked as it should. The other option, NOOBS, prints the observations but without that observation number column in the results viewer. Let's take a look at both of those. This is with the option OBS equals 5, and you'll notice I only get the first five observations in my data set. Below it, I have OBS equals 6, and I've decided to put no observation as an option, so I don't get that observation column. Another option that I find handy is the ID option. ID allows me to print my data, but with an actual ID from my data set rather than the generic observation number. I actually have a variable called ID in my data set, so to use this option, I have my proc print statement and my op number of observations I want to print. If I want no observation column, I can add that here, end it with a semicolon. And then I use the next line to put ID and then the name of my ID variable, which in this case is actually ID, ended with a semicolon. If you use this option, it, SAS will not print the observation column by default. 
So let's take a look at that. And you'll see here, instead of an observation column, I actually have my ID variable and all of those IDs listed. And this is just for the first 10 observations because I specified that in my syntax. Another option is the variable option. This allows you to print only the variables that you might be interested in looking at. So for example, if you have a data set that has 100 variables, you may only be interested in looking at observations for two or three of those variables. What you can do is add a line that says VAR, which indicates variable, and then list the variables in, that you want to see when you use proc print. So for this syntax, I'm only printing the first five observations, the ID variable, gender variable, and the last meeting variable. And you'll see here that that's the only information we get. Another option you might be interested in is the where option. And what this does is it lets you specify a, a filter for the data that you want to print. So for this first bit of syntax, I want to print data example two data set. I want to add the where option, and I want to say when gender equals one, those are the only data I want to see. If you have a numeric variable, you simply add equals and the number that corresponds to whatever you want to filter by. If you have a variable that's a character, you need to put that character in quotes. So for example, the arrival variable, it uses LT as a code, so I have to put that in quotes. We'll take a look at that, just the gender one. And you'll see here that I get a much shorter list of observations because all of these are filtered by gender equals one. And you can see on the left here, I have observation numbers that don't actually go in numeric order. It's because these are the observations where gender equals one as they appear in my data set. The last option you might be interested in is this label option. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any labels listed in this data set, but if, for example, instead of arrival, our label was arrival time at the office, if we added this label statement to our syntax, we could then see arrival at the office instead of just arrival in our options. Again, I'll cover using labels in another video, but just to run this syntax, you'll see that even if you don't have labels, the syntax will still run. But up here, instead of, for example, last meeting, I might have date of last meeting as my label, and this would appear in this column.